Hi everyone and welcome to the Behind the Music series. Uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land, the Turrbal and Yagara people, uh, and extend my respect to Elders past and present. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're really, my name's Dan, I'm a PhD candidate at the Conservatorium of Music at uh, Griffith University, uh, and I'm here with Rowan Hardy as well. And we're really excited to welcome Dr. Vilma Timonen um, from Sibelius Academy in Helsinki. He'll be with us for a few weeks. Um, and we'll be discussing today the, the roles of uh, musician, educator and researcher and how these three roles uh, inform and interact and nurture one another. Uh, and perhaps, uh, Vilma, you'd like to start us off? Yeah, great. Thanks. And great to be here. Uh, in my professional life, uh, these two aspects have been really intertwined. And I have to say that it, wasn't, it hasn't always been so easy to kind of um, navigate through like, okay, what am I, who am I, and like, should I be only one thing or focus on one thing? It's sometimes really hard to articulate your professional mm. identity. And um, I think it's just the recent years that I feel that these, all these different uh, personalities uh, or identities have come sort of to, uh, uh, have come together. So I find it actually quite fascinating to uh, trigger some questions and uh, thinking of how they actually nurture one another and what, what kind of educator would I be if I wasn't a musician? Mm -hmm. Or what kind of researcher would I be if I was not a, an educator? And so on. So I feel that it's definitely a benefit, but it would be lovely to hear your thoughts on the matter as well. Yeah, I think certainly education and teaching is something that we've discussed a little about, um, the relationship between the two. Um, what I'm really intrigued about is how you feel teaching as a, as a form of artistry is represented in that way that you are an educator also, in that bringing together musician, uh, like the uh, identity as a musician within, to you, within your teaching practice. Do you feel as a form of artistry that can develop there? Or it's, it's worth saying that it is a form of artistry in itself? That's a really, really interesting point. Somehow, I feel I, I love planning, planning the lessons when I teach. So kind of it and it's actually feels sometimes as I'm planning a performance. OK, mm. so there needs to be the dynamics. There needs to be the part where there is time for like digesting. And then there needs to be a place where you kind of uh, send it forward and yeah. like really push it. So and like kind of. I would say it's an artistic experience mm -hmm. at its best, yeah. and and somehow like, yeah, this is uh, I noticed that I'm kind of like searching for okay how to do this, yeah, how to do this. That's really interesting because I, uh, I don't do that a lot as a t as a, an educator. I there might be a couple of lessons that are planned perhaps throughout a, a term of work, but I really enjoy for the same reasons I really enjoy the maybe just knowing there's two or three things that I need to hit during the lesson, very much in that kind of musical way as well, or artistic way of like, I want this to feel a certain way, or I want this to be really, I don't know, like this. Because as an educator and a jazz musician, I find that I prefer the, not so much the opposite, but I, I like not planning stuff too much. So I'll plan uh, a handful of lessons, maybe through a term of work, um, and I will definitely think about the lessons beforehand and, and, and know what I want to, to sort of maybe hit throughout or the, the things I want to create at certain moments. But I much prefer going in and just kind of seeing what might emerge or, or what shape the lesson will take with this kind of thin veil of a framework perhaps over it. Um, and that sort of as a, as a PhD candidate, that's been my research has been about exploring the, the, the connections between my jazz training as a jazz drummer um, and as a high school English teacher. Um, and certainly I think when I began teaching there was much more um, reliance on the lesson plan as a process to, to learn that. I really liked how you sort of said crescendo and the kind of shape 
y yeah, almost the score of the lesson. And, and um, But then as I have become more comfortable with things or as this idea for this research sort of came, became more present in my mind, I realized I, I quite liked almost the, the freedom of wondering what might occur. I think that's fabulous. And uh, I'm a folk musician. Um, in our context, it means that I I'm, um, do the traditional musics that have been uh, existing in our uh, geographical area. And uh, improvisation is a natural part of any traditional music. Yes. Uh, because they're like orally transmitted, memory-based uh, ways of uh, practicing music. And I feel these improvisational qualities are actually the kinds that really benefit uh, both research and uh, teaching. Because, I mean, in the end, it's all about improvisation. Yeah. Uh, we're acting with, uh, uh, in the teaching, learning and teaching situations, we're acting with real people. You, we can never, I mean, there's, you can plan, you can have the score, yeah. but then, like, uh, there has to be space for improvisation. And uh, knowing those tools, kind of, from uh, the musical point of view, really gives yeah. the uh, confidence yeah. also to the improvisation in the teaching and learning situations. So I feel that this improvisation is really one of the key key things yeah. when we discuss about how these how these uh, different professional uh, aspects nurture one another. Mm. I find that really interesting too. In that, in my research. Uh, I feel the tension around improvisation and preparation um, in your teaching practice is focused is focused upon within the system, and in some cases, um, the personalization of lesson preparation, planning, and your ability to be agile within that space um, or behave as you were a musician mm -hmm. um, is is bound by the system around you. Um, so, and a good example that I find is that my ability as an improviser in, music, in my musical practice, um, I'm having to constantly bend my um, instinctual mm -hmm. um, leanings of, you know, in, in my teaching practice to suit the context of the system that I'm working within. Um, and then that, that exists within, I, mean, I work in state schools, um, and, I'm, and I know it exists within most secondary schools within Australia, do you find that in Finland there is a give and take and the teachers in your experience or the teachers you've trained are able to navigate that a little easier? Uh, uh, oh, that's it's a, a tricky question. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ooh, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Hmm. Is it easy to navigate through the balances between your instincts and musician yeah. and the demands of the system around you. Oh. Yeah. Can we keep all this in? This is Yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as said, our teachers have a lot of uh, freedom yes. in their designing their curricula mm. and the, it's all about like the local curricula. Mm. Uh, so in a sense there is freedom, freedom there. Uh, but then I think this is where the uh, inquiry or mm. research and education mm. steps in. Yeah. Like uh, what guides ultimately uh, what is uh, uh, kind of improvisational or like, um, uh, like creative process of designing your curricula and your lessons. But then uh, the guiding features, you need to have a pretty strong a ground, grounding in the educational ideals. What are you doing the education for? Mm. What is the really, uh, what is education actually? It's not, we're not training mm. uh, people mm. in playing musical pieces, but the educational thinking behind it. And that's where you need to incorporate also your uh, researcher uh, identity mm. into the process. Mm. Could I ask as well then, um, that idea of those sort of three identities, so for me to get to this point now where I can sense this sort of interactivity of these three sort of ways of being or whatever, um, it, 
it sort of began very much as a musician studying an undergrad in an honours music program and being very immersed in that. And then knowing I wanted to move into education, so then being in that space for, for a number of years as well, and that musical identity may be kind of diminishing somewhat, and then an awareness of that in my practice as a, as a high school teacher and then wanting to bring that back. And then this research aspect has come along after where, in fact, all three are sort of very much, maybe not completely even, but they're much more present for you and also then for you, Ro. Like how, how did that sort of transition or journey from one to the other to the other occur? And then how has it kind of re-established itself? Yeah, that's a really... I think you described my path as yeah. well, in a way, yeah. how, you, how you put it. So, of course, it starts with being a musician. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, core competence. Yeah. And I, I guess um, all of us have been doing, making music since the childhood. Yeah. So that's kind of the foundation. I was very passionate about teaching. Like, uh, when I graduated, I did my master's. I was kind of like, okay, this is the path where I want to go because I really felt that in education there is a possibility to make, to make difference in people's lives. Mm. Uh, teaching young children, like improvising, yeah. creating their own music, like really embracing the collaborative skills that are required in music. I really believe that uh, we have a better world yeah. when we do that kind of work. But then uh, after focusing some years um, almost all, uh, entirely on education, um, I started to feel the urge to redevelop, uh, rethink the pro artistic practices. Mm -hmm. So I did that and then like kind of through those years, it's kind of like, uh, okay, I want to understand more. Mm. I want to know more, like I have this like, uh, things, I'm, I have my artistic practice, I have my educational practice, but what is it about? There yeah. must be a lot of things. So I, then that was kind of the gate to, towards being a, t a researcher. Yeah. And so I think it's a part of the professional uh, development path. Like it's, uh, things come in different uh, times yeah. in our lives and it's just a, I think the synthesis is now somewhat there, but yeah. it was kind of this journey, following your kind of passion, and that uh, somehow then has yeah. led to, to slowly to the synthesis. Yeah. Yeah. I find the packaging of that whole story and in all three of our um, experiences, um, the holistic journey that we've taken is in its essence an artistic practice in that you are deconstructing yourself and rebuilding something and revisiting and remembering and reminiscing or uh, projecting even um, what could be. And I find that research element at the, the phase that Dan and I are in, in particular, like very formatively for us at the moment in our journey, very similar to yours, um, is a very deconstructing process. It is. Um, yeah. and whether or not we rediscovered the emergence of the, of the future or the projection of what the future might be for our educational journey is, is still an open door, you know? Yeah. I, I imagine it is. Even it in is. Your yeah. yeah, for sure. And that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Like kind of, uh, and maybe that's the only thing. I mean, you can't design your life and plan like, okay, this is what's going to happen. Mm. But uh, maybe then like, Traveling longer in the, like, okay, I'm hopped into this train, that's my life. It's taking me to different stations and kind of then trusting, finding the trust that, okay, it will take me forward mm -hmm. and things will kind of find their places. One more thing I, w I was thinking, um, also uh, coming back to the artistic practice, um, uh, uh, through being in uh, education for quite uh, long and intensively, I really feel that uh, being an educator, I mean, there you really need the skills to kind of break down your practice, yeah. to kind of analyze where, what, what, what is it actually made of when I play my instrument, when I create music, 
uh, when I play um, music that's been composed by other people, what kind of skills do I actually need? And how can I get my uh, pr pr artistic practice like uh, go forward? Mm. So in those, like the educational experience has been tremendously helpful. Yeah. Mm. Being able to verbalize uh, things, categorize things, uh, building parts towards mm. some some goals, or mm. maybe there are open open goals and it's not yet in view, like mm. Dewey put it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, somehow, kind of okay, this is something where I want to go and somehow being able to figure out how to do that. Mm. And that is a that's a playful experience. And it's yeah. Just, well, I'm very interested in hearing more about that process from educators in their journey as musicians also. Um, th as I said, that you're constantly re re refreshing, let's say, or reflecting on your practice and looking at other options and this option and picking something from here and something from there. And, and trial and error also, as you know, Dewey would, would put it also, in the experience of education and how that fosters um, some more confidence in your teaching practice or even more confidence in you as a musician. Mm. Um, and researcher, as yes. I'm finding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's interesting. Yeah, and I, yeah, and it's like, I think this research, because research then, like having the opportunity to engage with uh, brilliant minds, mm -hmm. like uh, not just in our time, but the past and the, like, it's just like wonderful pool of like where, where you can find uh, different perspectives mm. to, to okay this is and this is how one way of thinking about these things so it's just this ongoing inspiration for both artistic and educational and developing one's uh, um, ability to navigate mm. through different kind of levels if it's like somewhere here, or yeah. then there is the very practical, okay, how do you play the scales? Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what are all the things that are in between? Yeah. And there are so many different routes. Mm. So it's absolutely fascinating, I mm. think. Mm. Mm. Um, what so what this has all got me thinking about, um, at this sort of phase in my writing and thinking, I've been questioning my role of these three different sort of um, manifestations of what I do and wondering is it in fact just different variations of being a learner and that that's the sort of the primary position from which we are embarking on and I like that sort of idea of it this sort of train in a way but that we are embarking on this this sort of journey then of being a musician and then being an educator and being a researcher and maybe sometimes one takes a sort of uh, you know it has more weight behind it um, but all three are always at play. However, they are all expressions of learning for our in our own practices. I like that. I like that idea a lot. And uh, yeah, and what is learning yeah. actually? And and sorry, but, but then that these three things also teach you teach one different ways of yes. learning and being that learner in those different contexts. Yes. Yeah. And I think learning itself is like, uh, well, thinking about professional development mm. um, as learning process. So mm. it's actually, I think it's through these lenses that you just pointed out, we're very much in the core yeah. of like, uh, what, what is it about? And eventually it's about being a human. Yeah. This is the very basic nature of like yeah. uh, developing development is professional but it always learning involves always this uh, in-depth uh, experience yeah. and perhaps something that cannot be pre-planned no, too think, much yeah uh, but it's a holistic uh, transformation somehow yeah so and this brings me also wonder about the role of music and art as learning. It is perhaps not the kind of learning that could be like tick, 
Yeah. Okay, now you know how to play, play that scale. Yeah. That's but there training, is in essence, uh, that's the training aspect, yeah. kind of like yeah, you learn how to play your instrument. Mm. But then, educational music uh, teaching and learning, it has to be something uh, like um, it's it it cannot be verbalized. Mm. I mean, co going back to the uh, musical traditional musics. Uh, that where I come from, I mean, it has been the like kandele playing. Kandele is my instrument. Um, Hundred years ago um, and way back before that, uh, there was a kandele in every house, and uh, at least that was the saying. But it was not far out too much. But playing the instrument was something that everyone would do. Mm or like many people would do. It was like their right for self-expression, way of relaxing after hard days of working, trying to manage, uh, having an experience of like uh, raising yourself somewhere other than the just what we do every yeah. day, how we speak every day, but having the kind of communication internal and then, of course, with the others present. So I think this is something very relevant when we talk about learning. Mm. Being a musician, understanding this kind of experiences, yeah. what does it mean to communicate through means that escape the everyday language expressions? Mm. Yeah, and you've there both you both mentioned Dewey and his, you know, one one thing he says is that you can't teach that experience. Yes. It's, it's it's up to the learner to have it, yeah. and the teacher can't really make that happen. Um, yeah, and that act then of having had one's day and then picking an instrument up and just sort of being with it and yeah, that, that's really lovely. But it is also yeah. about providing the conditions for that. Yes. To grow. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that uh, I'm really interested in, in hearing more about from your experience. Um, what conditions, I don't know, this, this may be anecdotal, but mm -hmm. I, I've heard that in, in um, Scandinavian countries, often students that learn instruments, their parents will also learn them at the same time. Is that true? In some cases, yeah. not always. Like part of that yeah. learning experience yes. is about having someone along the journey with you, and therefore like the conditions are provided for that learning to flourish in some cases, which I find very interesting because that's not, that's certainly not the case in Australia. Like culturally for us, um, it's very, sometimes feels like a very solo journey. You know, yeah. you know you're not, um, often not accompanied by someone who's on the same level as you, either, whether it be a, a family member or a, a friend or a colleague. Um, it is a very solo journey and I don't, where, I, where I'm struggling with tension there too is that I find learning the best and most fertile environments for learning are when they're collaborative and when there's, um, there's a shared experience. Definitely. Um, and, and particularly in improvising. Mm -hmm. yeah. like it's a conversation. Yeah. Like, and education and teaching is a conversation in, in my mind, <laughs> in my experience. Um, do you bring those types of philosophies or thoughts within your teaching practice also? Yeah, I'm very much uh, uh, for collaborative <laughs> learning uh, in all possible ways, I would say. But uh, yeah, practical uh, ways of operating like and coming back to the educational dimensions of music teaching and learning. Uh, teaching an ensemble, for instance, uh, which is in the curricula in music institutes, like where the kids go and learn, learn music. Um, so actually learning the skills of being an, a musician in an ensemble, be it any kind of ensemble. Uh, I've been teaching the folk music ensembles, Kantele ensembles. But the main feature there is that we learn how to communicate, mm. taking a role of a leader when needed, giving space, mm. listening to the others when needed, supporting yeah. uh, others 
Uh, I mean, the band sounds terrible if there is the ears are not open, the support is not there. Mm. So these are actually the core educational uh, values that are passed on through this uh, mm. music making practices. Because mm. mm. I, I, yeah, I see, I view learning as a very individual pursuit. Ah, not as interesting. A, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and that comes back to the work that Biesta's done around learnification. And in an education context, it becoming a very individualized um, goal of, ed of systems and, and teachers too. Um, and I, I wonder how that collaborative process can manifest more in education through music in, in particular. Um, so that learning's not seen as an individual pursuit and regardless of whether you're in an ensemble or you know, preparing for a, a recital of a piece of music that's you know, on a solo instrument or, um, or even practicing the, the skills like we've talked about to be able to jump into a band and play. Um, uh, I just, I'd love to be able to see learning as that holistic artistic process. Um, yeah, mm, more of a statement mm. than, yes. <laughs> than a question. <laughs> I, I, I think that's, I think it comes back a little bit to what you're talking about with that ensemble. It's about the, the environment, in, and you mentioned that earlier too, that environment you are creating. So you can still have people learning on their own. I suppose within the system, you know, most systems of schools here, it is very much like a student learning a thing and mm. it's them on their own. But And they're, they're also, they're, they're um, assessed and they as, are yeah, on their own. Yeah, but um, you can still create a space in which that individual learning can take place within a, a group setting and collaborative nurturing space. Mm -hmm. And I think at least what I've experienced is it's those that intuition that comes from being a musician and those musical experiences of uh, of being able to express yourself as an individual in an ensemble, but you are still creating an ensemble sound. Um, that that's for me the kind of connections there. And that there's an amount then of the kind of the system that you kind of just have to put to one side and just say that'll happen at some point. But now while we are here, this is what we are doing. And, and yes, you're working on that and you're working on that, but we are working. Yeah. And and I really liked what you just said about the sort of the leading when you had to have to and and the space giving space when you have to. And I think that space is such a musical idea which to me equates to silence in a classroom, um, even though it's sort of the same thing that you're, you're kind of creating or giving. Um, and I think that also comes into that when knowing, the teacher knowing or the educator knowing when to step in and, and, and interact and when to, to not. And I think those are, for me, those are ideas and, and intuitions that come from the, my musical background. Yeah. Um, I don't quite know how that connects to the researching side of things, yeah. but I guess it's that constant inquiring while you're in a classroom and inquiring when you're in an ensemble of, did that work, will this work, I wonder what happens if, exactly. or you know, those questions maybe, which happen when you're like, I wonder what happens if I think about it like this or whatever, maybe. yeah. It is constant inquiry, mm. and I find it extremely fascinating, uh, the kind of like yeah, discovering the alternative paths uh, and that's what education is mm. for ex uh, exactly yeah. as well. So kind of navigating through different opportunities and keeping somehow the educational goal there. Okay, so what are we actually uh, educating them for? Mm. Is it about being able to do yeah. the playing, yeah. this is my instrument <laughs> here, or is it about uh, becoming a confident and content human being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's such a great point to finish up on, Vilma. Um, we just wanted to say thank you so much, Vilma, for joining us at the Conservatory of Music and for coming to Australia and sharing your wisdom and experience with us. Ben and I are very humbled to have had the opportunity to talk yeah. about music education very briefly with you. Yes, <laughs> thank um, you so much. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank yeah. you. And thanks for listening. <laughs>